Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the public meeting for the Woodland Boulevard Safety Improvement Projects. My name is Ty Garner. I'm the project manager with the Florida Department of Transportation. During the meeting, we will explain the department's plans to improve safety and enhance operations along three sections of Woodland Boulevard and DeLand. We encourage your feedback, and there are many ways to provide input. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing and will become part of the public record. I will now turn it over to our project team to begin the presentation. This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 449457-1 www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 449457-2 or www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 449457-3. For online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right corner of your computer screen. If joining GoToWebinar on your mobile device, simply tap the screen to display the same options. The blue arrows in both images point to where you will find the question box. You can type a comment or question into the question box. Then click Send to submit your comment or question to staff. The red arrows in both images point to where you can find handouts, documents, and comment forms for this public meeting. Click the Handouts icon to see available handouts. Click on the file name to download. If you happen to experience a technical issue during this meeting, please type the issue in the questions box on the control panel on GoToWebinar or send an email to chuck at valerian-group.com to report it. You may also call 1-833-851-8340. Staff will do their best to assist you. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to explain the project goals, present the department's recommended improvements to help achieve those goals, and hear from the community about the proposed changes. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, DeLand, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5077, or email melissa.mckinney at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Stefan Kulikowski, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4742, or email at stefan.kulikowski at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. Safety has always been a priority for the Florida Department of Transportation, but in recent years, the focus has sharpened to consider every way possible to truly make our roadways safer, especially for vulnerable users. Woodland Boulevard, also known as US 1792 in the city of Delan, was identified as a corridor with multiple pedestrian and bicycle crashes. By working collaboratively with the local stakeholders, FDOT has developed potential solutions for Woodland Boulevard and has identified three segments along the corridor to implement safety improvements. 
These segments located between East Taylor Road, also known as State Road 15A, and International Speedway Boulevard, also known as US 92, were used to create three separate projects. All three segments are in the city of DeLand in Volusia County and have separate financial project identification numbers, or FPIDs. Now let's discuss the first segment on Woodland Boulevard, which begins at East Taylor Road and ends at East Beresford Avenue. This section of Woodland Boulevard is a transition area where drivers are going from higher speeds to the lower speeds found in downtown DeLand. The FPID number for this project is 449-457-1. What makes these proposed changes necessary? From April 2017 through April 2023, there were 792 total crashes on this section of Woodland Boulevard. The map on the left shows the locations and severity of crashes. The maps to the right highlight the most severe crashes. The large purple dots represent the four fatalities, while the red dots are crashes that resulted in serious injury. There were also 14 crashes involving pedestrians and two crashes involving bicyclists. The goals for this segment are to encourage safer driving speeds by meandering the roadway alignment to create small curves, using taller landscaping in the median, and adding curb and gutter. Other goals include reducing left turn and angle crashes by modifying or closing median openings, creating a separated bicycle lane, and providing more safe crossing areas for pedestrians with pedestrian hybrid beacons, or PHBs. A basic principle of access management is to limit the number of conflict points, or points along a roadway where the paths of two vehicles can legally cross, but just not at the same time. Each conflict point is a location where a crash can occur. One way to limit conflict points is by minimizing the number of median openings and restricting certain movements at some median openings. So, what exactly is a PHB? As seen in this artist's rendering of the PHB planned for north of Chippewa Avenue, a PHB is an overhead traffic signal that is designed to provide increased visibility and protection for vulnerable road users at mid-block crossing locations. A PHB consists of two side-by-side -side red lights that are mounted above a single yellow light. The lights remain dark until they are activated by pedestrians wishing to cross. Once the PHB is activated, yellow lights will begin to flash, followed by solid red lights, requiring drivers to stop. When the red lights begin to flash, drivers must stop, but can proceed with caution once the crosswalk is cleared. Proposed improvements include adding a bicycle lane on both sides of the roadway, separated from the travel lanes by a grass buffer and separated from the existing sidewalk. New landscaping is planned for the medians to help manage traffic speed. Now, let's walk through other proposed changes, starting with the first half of this segment. Currently, this segment of Woodland Boulevard has eight full median openings in a one-mile stretch, as well as three signalized intersections and a roundabout. In addition to repaving the roadway and modifying some driveways, FDOT is proposing to meander the roadway by varying the curve of the median to create horizontal deflection, which encourages safer driving speeds. Plans also include modifying the full median openings at Chippewa Avenue and Andover Street to bi-directional medians and closing the median opening at Gilbert Street. In addition, there is a mid-block crossing with a pedestrian hybrid beacon or PHB plan north of Chippewa Avenue. Continuing to the second half of this segment, proposed changes include modifying the full median openings at Vermont Avenue and Lisbon Parkway to bi-directional medians, and to close the median openings at Mansfield Street, Calvin Street, 
and Carroll Avenue. There is another mid-block crossing with a PHB plan just north of Calvin Street. The median modifications would require vehicles turning onto Woodland Boulevard from a side street or driveway within this one-mile segment to turn right and then make a U-turn if needed. Bidirectional medians reduce the possibility of conflict points. Another advantage of these median modifications is improved left turn lanes along the corridor. You can view an artist rendered video of the proposed changes for this corridor by visiting the project page at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 4494571. The design of this project is in progress and anticipated to be complete in spring 2024. The improvements on this project will be within the existing right-of-way. Construction for this project is currently unfunded and has an estimated cost of $4.5 million. The second segment on Woodland Boulevard begins at East Beresford Avenue and ends at Plymouth Avenue. The FPID number for this segment is 4494-57-2. Segment 2 includes downtown DeLand and Stetson University. From April 2017 through April 2023, there were 521 total crashes in this segment, as depicted in the map on the left side. To the right, the blue circles represent crashes involving injury, and the purple circles are areas where there have been fatalities. There were two fatalities south of Plymouth Avenue within this segment, 24 crashes involving pedestrians, and 4 crashes involving bicyclists. The goal of this project is to enhance pedestrian safety by constructing 6 new pedestrian mid-block crossings with rectangular rapid flashing beacons. The project will also upgrade 3 existing crossing locations. Beginning at the south end of the project, new pedestrian crossings are planned at Winnemusset Avenue, and north of Euclid Avenue, near the Intermodal Transportation Facility. Both will be equipped with Rectangular Rapid Flashing Beacons, or RRFBs. Another new crossing is planned at Georgia Avenue, and the existing crossing at Church Street will be upgraded. Through the Stetson campus, new crossings are planned at Michigan Avenue and University Avenue, and south of Pennsylvania Avenue. The project will also upgrade the existing crossing between Minnesota Avenue and University Avenue. Finally, the project will upgrade the existing crossing south of Oakdale Avenue. So, what exactly is an RRFB? As shown in this artist rendering of an RRFB south of University Avenue, an RRFB consists of two rapid flashing yellow lights that are mounted below a yellow pedestrian crossing sign. The flashing lights remain dark until they are activated by a pedestrian wishing to cross. While motorists are legally required to stop for pedestrians in any crosswalk in the state of Florida, RRFBs are installed to bring more visibility to the marked crosswalk to help pedestrians who need to cross. You can view an artist rendered video of the proposed changes for this corridor by visiting the project page at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 4494572. Due to recent fatalities and to ensure public safety, this project has been fast tracked. The design of this project is in progress and anticipated to be complete in summer 2023. The improvements on this project will be within the existing right-of-way. Construction for this project is currently funded for fall 2023 and has an estimated cost of $800,000. The final segment on Woodland Boulevard, FPID number 4494573, begins at Plymouth Avenue and ends at International Speedway Boulevard. This section is the shortest of the three segments, 
yet shows a very high frequency of crashes, as shown in the map on the left side of the page. From April 2017 through April 2023, there were 310 crashes. On the maps to the right, the purple circles show the location of fatal crashes. Four of the fatalities occurred north of Plymouth Avenue in this segment. The red circles show locations of serious injury crashes, while the blue circles indicate crashes with injuries. Nine of the crashes involve pedestrians and four involve bicyclists. The recommended improvements for this segment were designed to help reduce conflict points and therefore reduce crashes and crash-related injuries by modifying or closing median openings to reduce the chances to left turn and angle crashes. Introducing new mid-block crossings equipped with PHBs, creating a protected bicycle lane with a traffic separator, and adding landscaping to encourage safer driving speeds. Proposed improvements include adding a protected bicycle lane with a concrete separator on both sides of the roadway. New landscaping is also planned for the corridor to help slow traffic. Now, let's walk through the other proposed changes starting with the first half of this segment. Currently, this segment of Woodland Boulevard has 10 full median openings within three quarters of a mile, which has contributed to the number of crashes along this corridor. In addition to resurfacing the roadway and modifying some driveways, FDOT is proposing to close the existing median openings at Woodmont Road, Washington Avenue between Tangerine Avenue and East Parkdale Avenue and Mandarin Avenue, and to modify the full median opening at North Boulevard Court to a bi-directional median. In addition, there are mid-block crossings with PHB's plan south of Washington Avenue and north of East Parkdale Avenue. Continuing to the second half of this segment, proposed changes include closing the existing median openings at East South Street and East Palm Street and modifying the medians at East Kentucky Avenue and North Street to directional medians. There is another mid-block crossing with a PHB plan just north of East South Street. Due to the concrete separating the bike lane, bus platforms will be modified to accommodate passengers getting on and off the bus. Once again, these median modifications would require vehicles turning onto Woodland Boulevard from a side street or driveway within this segment to turn right and then make a U-turn if needed, making the corridor safer for all users. You can view a computer-generated video of the proposed changes for this corridor by visiting www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 4494573. The design of this project is in progress and anticipated to be complete in spring 2024. This project is being designed in-house by FDOT staff with no additional design costs. The improvements on this project will be within the existing right-of-way. Construction for this project is currently unfunded and has an estimated cost of $2.8 million. We encourage your input and feedback about this project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by July 24, 2023, 12 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing. In-person attendees are encouraged to speak with project team members to ask questions and provide input. To submit a comment for the public meeting record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. To submit a comment or a question online, please type the comment or question in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project websites at www.cflroads.com forward slash project 
forward slash 449457-1, www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 449457-2, or www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 449457-3. You may also contact the project manager directly by email at ty.garner at dot.state.fl.us or by U.S. mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 542, Deland, Florida, 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5299 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. To learn more about these projects, go to www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 449457-1, 449457-2, or 449457-3 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the website now. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on these projects. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by Monday, July 24, 2023. Have a good evening.